So, do you, I mean, after sort of five, six years, we're talking about this kind of fatigue thing that's that's kind of creeping in, which I think is is a real thing right now. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever felt that fatigue? Oh, yes. I actually, the reason I took off most of, I think it was 2017, I stopped playing because I was just tired of, it's essentially... 2017 was the first version of what we're experiencing now. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But the wait for 3.0 was very rough. And it was around that time when I just was done with the project. I completely ignored it for like six months. And even wow. since then, I've never really had a machine that was good at playing this game. So it's always been kind of a frustrating experience. Even now, I get like 20 to 25 frames per second. It's not fun. So no. I... Yeah, I oftentimes get very tired of playing and I just want to be able to jump into a stable environment where I can interact with things reliably and run a mission that I know will complete and like try to log <laughs> on and actually get into the game. Yeah, there, I have yeah. so many things I could complain about with the game, but I think the saving grace for me is that I have always, it's only started to change in the last year. I've always been more interested in the development than actually playing the game. And I think that's yeah. what kept me from going crazy for such a long time. I mean, the, the, yeah, I mean, you get two types of people, don't you? You get the people that are really into the development of the game and how it's how it's evolving and are really into it. And you get people that just want to play. They mm -hmm. just want to get in a ship and shiny ship and fly around and shoot things and do whatever, you know? Yeah. And I fall into the second category, I think, where I just want to play the game and I'm not necessarily that into what they're doing. Um, which is, which is, I think people, who, I think people like me, not me at all, but people that fall into my category are the most likely to, to like go, go away, <laughs> do other things, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I don't blame them for it. I think that's, no. I, I think it's a very good idea absolutely phenomenally good idea for people to take periodic breaks from a game like star citizen this is not a game that's made to be played hardcore for long amounts of time this is an alpha practically a tech demo that is broken in many different places and is literally just a chance to see what's coming along it's been 10 years so it sounds really dumb to say that at this point but the fact of them that's just how it is you this this whole 10 year thing and this whole 500 million thing, um, which is a wet fish smashed around their faces quite often. Yeah. You know, the, the, the 500 million thing. Is that a lot of money for a game of this size? For 10 years? Really? I don't think so, no. I don't think so. And you split it over 10 years. But like the other thing as well, I mean, the 10 year thing, it, it, this, is a, this is a huge project, isn't it? I mean, this, this is revolutionary stuff here. I mean, nobody else is really doing this, are, are they? I would say not not a combination of these things. No, there are definitely yeah. like people doing specific parts in different games, but to combine it all into something like what they're trying to do is yes, one hundred percent unique. Yeah. Well, okay, so, not one hundred. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty unique, and often games that are doing this on a, some, albeit a smaller scale. Let's let's say APB for example, which was much smaller scale but similar. They had the same visions. They wanted this massive open world thing and they fell horribly short. And their funding uh went into the went into the multi millions as well, you know, went into the hundred millions as well. So I, when you look at the bigger scale, I mean, yeah, you can you can criticize Star Citizen and call it scam citizen or whatever people say, but you know, I'm still through all the negatives, I'm I'm still very pro Star Citizen. I think it's it's a great project. And uh, it has so many faults, but it's it's still a great project. So I'm call me a white knight or whatever you want to call me, but I honestly do think it's great. I I still play it all all the time. I still play it every day, most days. Um, so I don't want to you know suggest that I'm I'm picking holes or anything like that with the game because I am. But at the same time, I still there's a lot going for it. You know. Well, you um, said you said that. Um, you you still play it. You play it a lot. You play it regularly. You yeah. asked me about how I've dealt with like the burnout and just playing something that really hasn't changed that much over time. 
I mentioned that the good thing to do there is either, well, I mentioned that it's good to take breaks, but there's also another option, which is just to kind of regulate how much you're playing. Some people mm -hmm. like to play games hardcore for one month, 10 hours a day, and then be done with them. Some people like to play a couple hours every week for a long time. Do you, do you employ any sort of strategy to avoid burning out with this game, or you just naturally can play it and you don't really have much problem? The problem with Star Citizen that we have at the moment, you can't just pick it up and play it for an hour because you won't get out the station in an hour <laughs> or you won't you won't be able to spawn your ship get in your ship fly out to a location within an hour because everything takes five hours mm -hmm. so especially when you're doubling up with people so you have to dedicate some time to playing star citizen you, you know it's not a pick up and drop game yeah so that's that's problem number one <laughs> so um when people want to unwind of an evening they've got home from work it's already five, six, seven o'clock in the evening. They want to play a game. Maybe not Star Citizen because, you know, you've got a couple of hours and you're thinking about you know, turning in or whatever. So that's a problem straight away. But uh, for me personally, the issue isn't so much around the gameplay or lack of gameplay or whatever you want to say, the game loops. It's more about stability. I have big issues with the stability, even though the latest patch seems to have kind of semi-resolved it. But... Mm -hmm. It literally breaks the game for me. I remember doing a rock mining live stream. I crashed every 15 minutes on that stream and, and ended up abandoning it because it was just so insane. I And it wouldn't just crash. It wouldn't just do a 30k. It's kind of okay if it does that because you're protected to a degree. But yeah. it was crashing to desktop. It was doing the verification thing. And my machine, and like you, I've got a bit of a potato machine. So... It wouldn't just crash the desktop, it would freeze my machine <laughs> completely. Uh. And if, if I was live streaming, I had a single PC, game over. <laughs> so uh, it, it was horrific. I, I think it went through a stage where the crashes were so extreme, it was just ridiculous. It was so bad. It was unplayable. And that was the point where I had the burnout. I did have a burnout on the game. Mm -hmm. um, so, so for me, it's all about stability, you know? Okay rather than what's coming, you know, the, the, the concept ships and all this sort of thing. I'm not really that into it. It's, it's, it's about the stability. So getting the client to function as a client properly where it boots the game and you don't, you know, yeah. you don't crash the desktop or whatever. That, that's a bigger deal to me than what's coming in 2028. You know? uh, yeah. Yeah. If you can, if you can separate yourself from like the slow development and just enjoy the game that's there, I think it really does come down to that. If if the things that are there are working, you can have fun with them. But there's just no way to try and enjoy it if you're dealing with workarounds and glitches and crashes constantly. One or two maybe, but yeah, I think I think getting the game to some sort of a more stable position, which is, you know, it's a game in alpha, how much can they do that, would help a yeah. lot with, with that kind of, um, with that burnout. Yeah, I, I have complete and total respect for anybody that live streams or covers Star Citizen because we will probably know more than anyone. To get content out of the game is an absolute nightmare. Um, if you do a VOD and you're not using B-roll, you're using pro, you know, you're going in and you're spawning the ships or borrowing the ships oh and you're boy. doing this and, that and it crashes. Yeah, that's like two hours gone. And you yeah. have to do the same again. You go into the game, spawn the ship, da da da, get to where you need to get to, do all of this stuff. Yeah, it's 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 actually quite horrible. And uh, <laughs> I've I've given up on certain videos because I've I've just had such a hard time just getting the shots that I need to get. Yeah, just like you know what, forget it. <laughs> yeah, that's why I transitioned a lot of my stuff to using what was already pre-made because trying to film and get enough footage for videos in game is very difficult and. It's a different side of burnout. Content creation burnout is definitely a thing when it comes to Star Citizen too. Yeah. 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 It's a it's a one hundred percent thing for sure.